Good evening, a northern suburb students being remembered as a hero tonight after a school fishing trip turned to tragedy on York Peninsula. The 16-year-old drowned while trying to save his mate who slipped off rocks on a notorious beach. When members of the Syrian community arrived at Browns Beach this morning, they came with hope, but by 11.30, the news nobody wanted to hear. The body of a 16-year-old male was located very in very close proximity to the, uh, the where the person was last seen. That boy was Ahmad Alfaran, a Year 11 student at Pinnacle College in Elizabeth East. He and seven others were on a school fishing trip to York Peninsula, accompanied by two teachers. They were standing on rocks yesterday afternoon when one fell into the ocean. The rocks um, down there are very, very slippery and we believe that one of the students uh, slipped on the rocks. Ahmad was first to jump in to help. We really see that as a really heroic act uh, to try and uh, rescue his, his mate. Other followed but the 16 year old from Paralawi was the only one who didn't make it back to land. This morning police divers were out in force hoping for a miracle. Instead the teenager's body was returned to shore. The boy's father was here um, and again tragic that he was uh, had to be uh, witness uh, his, his uh, young son being located. And I felt sick myself mm. just just thinking about the, the tragedy had happened. Sheer hell sheer hell actually. Friends say the soccer loving student had a massive heart and would have risked his life for anyone. Like he loves everyone, he loves to help everyone. Yeah, if he saw like someone that needs help, he would help. One of Ahmad's classmates, a 17 year old boy who managed to scramble back to shore, was flown to Adelaide overnight but has since been released from hospital. Three others were treated at Yorktown. Their physical scars no match for the emotional toll on a community in mourning. Casey Trelaw, 7 News. And Casey now joins us live from Innes National Park. Casey, the waters there are treacherous for tourists. They are, Mike. This recent tragedy is one of three at recent drownings here at the park's remote Browns Beach. In November last year, a 35-year-old uh, drowned after slipping off the rocks and into the sea. Then in 2019, a young man's body was recovered. He also fell while fishing off those extremely slippery rocks. And at nearby Pondalawi Bay, a 26-year-old went missing after being swept out by a freak wave. So with the Easter long weekend and and school holidays fast approaching, tourists are being warned to be extra vigilant around the water's edge to avoid another tragedy. The Australian coastline is treacherous. Um, there is signage. Um, we, we ask people to read the signs um, and just, uh, just be very, very careful when, they, uh, when they're walking down by the, the rocks. And if in doubt, steer clear of the water altogether. Rosanna. Thank you, Casey. The grieving family and friends of a young Adelaide veterinarian who took her own life are shining a spotlight on the pressures of the industry. Last month, Sophie Putland became the third Australian vet to die by suicide this year. Her family's given Seven News their blessing to tell her story. Sophie Putland had the world at her feet. The talented vet was a shining light to those who knew her. I would consider Sophie as like a super vet. She just brilliantly minded. She grew up in Adelaide, but was about to open her own practice with good friend Adam Merson in Melbourne. We'd often talk about how we were gonna, you know, change the industry. But three weeks ago, the 33 year old took her own life. I still feel like she's just gonna pick up the phone and say, hey. It's left her friends heartbroken. She was so inspirational and so smart. And her family devastated. They say Sophie loved animals, her furry babies, so much. The vet industry is the worst for losing her. An industry which has one of the highest suicide rates in the country. Sophie is one of three Australian vets to die by suicide this year. These situations are, are, have gutted me. I take it very, very hard personally. The Veterinary Association is aiming to reduce the rate by 50%. It says younger vets aged between 25 
25 and 35 tend to suffer the most with their mental health. Many are overworked and underpaid with a lack of support. We are doing a, a lot of good work in this space, but um, we haven't solved it yet. And until we do, I don't think the profession can rest. Sophie's family says a major challenge she faced was abuse from pet owners. Days before she died, she'd encountered a particularly hostile client. We are completely vulnerable and um, there are no safeguards or protections for our profession. Sophie's parents say when the time is right and they're ready to turn their grief into action, they want to launch a national campaign calling on pet owners to be kind to vets and help find solutions to make the industry a safer place to work. It's amazing that they're already being so brave to, to, um, to build something like that. Casey Law, 7 News. And if you need to talk to someone, you can call Lifeline anytime on 13 11 14. A Port Lincoln mother who survived a terrifying breast cancer ordeal is continuing to defy the odds. She was told she was unlikely to conceive again after months of invasive treatments. Now she's preparing to welcome her second child. Casey Trelaw has more. Paige Swalu knew something wasn't right when her eight-month-old daughter Daisy would only feed from one breast. Paige found a lump and her doctors hoped it was mastitis, but a family member had just tested positive to the BRCA gene and deep down alarm bells were ringing. Dozens of tests later revealed an eight and a half centimetre tumour. Then I was officially diagnosed with stage three, grade three triple negative breast cancer. It's scary. Lots pretty confronting that like you don't expect that to happen before 30. She was frightened for her life and also her fertility future. They wanted more kids but were told the invasive treatment would make it hard. The type of chemotherapy that I was on was most likely going to send me into an early menopause. Along with that, they, they do a medically induced menopause. Then came a double mastectomy and radiation. Then her first stroke of luck. Seven months after her diagnosis, she'd beaten the odds. Her body was cancer free. Her second miracle came a day before her 30th birthday. I said to my husband, I've either got cancer again or I'm pregnant. She was. They'd fallen pregnant naturally, leaving her specialist speechless. I sort of said, oh, is it OK if I'm pregnant? And it was a pause on the end of the phone and she was just like, well, I've not had this before. Even the doctors, I don't think, thought there was something that was possible. And once baby number two is born, Paige is already looking to restart her hairdressing business once more.